Well, hello everyone. I wanted to put together some uh, lecture videos over this chapter on uh, stress and health. I tend to refer to it as health psychology. And I want to cover a number of things, most of which are found in this chapter. A few things that are actually found in another chapter. But I got to tell you, this is an up and coming field. Uh, the demand for, uh, uh, obviously, to be healthy and our own physical longevity is getting to be very important on people's minds. So this material um, is, is definitely valuable. As far as a career in health psychology, it's still a little challenging because one has to get into the world of research in the university. It's hard to be a, a full-time, high-paid consultant in the field of health psychology. But while it's hard to make a, a career in the private sector, the material is still very important, and that's what I want to hit upon right now. When we talk about health psychology, it, it's interesting. Um, one of the real big discussions, of course, when we talk about health psychology is stress. And I've actually had the opportunity to do presentations on this topic before. I've talked to different groups. I've mentioned it. And, and a lot of people give me that, uh, that look that says, why are you talking to me about this? I know everything there is to know about stress. You know, stress is awful. Stress is, uh, it, there's no, no redeeming qualities to it. You know, my life, my life would be so much better if there was no stress in it. And, and that's sort of the mentality that a lot of people have. And yet what we find is, is that all of this is inaccurate. All of this is inaccurate. Um, not all stress is awful. And we're going to talk about that here shortly. Uh, it does have a positive side to it. And you can't live a life that is without stress. So when you think in those terms, you're actually sort of hurting yourself because basically you don't have a true grasp on uh, what it is and what you can do about it. So let's turn around and talk about some of the different categories. There's an upside to stress because not all stress is bad. And I know a lot of people are just absolutely shocked when, when I say that. Oh, stress is not good. Well, there is something out there called eustress. And eustress, simply put, is good stress. The EU, the letters EU in eustress, is Latin for good. Maybe you've heard the term euphoria, okay? Uh, eustress is that stress which motivates us. Eustress is that uh, stress that gives us the energy to get up. Uh, let's say it's uh, 1130 at night and uh, you're thinking of going to bed early, but you, you stay up and you finish that research paper or that assignment a day or two early. Uh, eustress uh, uh, gives us the motivation to keep on going sometimes. So not all stress is bad. Eustress is actually a good thing. The one that's such a problem is distress. Okay, That's the one that's at the issue. Distress is the one that can uh, uh, make it difficult for us to focus. Distress is the one that can make it difficult for us to, uh, to concentrate, all right? Distress actually even influences memory. You turn around and you watch some television show like Who Wants to Be a Millionaire or some other game show, and uh, a person is asked a very basic question and they can't remember the answer to it. Well, we sit at home in the comfort of our own house or apartment or whatever, and we say, well, God, how could you not know the answer to that? you got to realize they're sitting in a, uh, a studio trying to win sometimes an awful lot of money. And um, there's all these white hot lights and, you know, probably three dozen people behind the camera watching you. You get distressed. And studies have actually found that distress can make it difficult for us to sometimes remember things. It also can cause us to make um, quick decisions that are not well thought out. That's why some salespeople will like to press you and stress you because they know you'll make a decision faster uh, without giving it a lot of thought just to calm them down. You know, they'll, they'll press you to say, for example, buy a car. What's it going to take to get you to buy this car? You know, and they keep stressing you until you finally go, okay, fine, I'll buy it. And then guess what? They're your best friend. Then they calm down. It's all part of the game. And the last thing we know about distress is this. If it's intense enough, and if it is uh, long-term, it can have an effect on your immune system, and it can make you more susceptible, stress can, to illness. Uh, 
And if it's very long term, and it does take a while for this to happen, it can actually have an influence on things such as heart disease uh, and even uh, respiratory illnesses and things like that. So the big question is, how do you know the difference? How do you know the difference between good stress versus distress, eustress versus distress? And one of the things we find that really influences these two factors is how predictable things are. And simply put, the more predictable things tend to be, I'll say that again, the more predictable things tend to be, the less distressing they tend to be. If you can excuse me, plan and prepare and, and get a feel for what might happen, and if this happens or if that happens or this other thing happens, I know what I'm going to do. If you can put together that kind of planning, things are not so unpredictable. Okay? Ask anyone who's played uh, uh, baseball or softball, uh, as I did when I was younger. The coach always taught us, if the ball is hit to you, always think to yourself in advance where you're going to throw it. You're going to throw it home. You're going to throw it to second base. You're going to take it to first base. Where are you going to throw it? Okay? Once you know that, it makes things more predictable. Okay? So predictability uh, can be addressed through planning, and that tends to make things less distressing. The second is control. And the question here with control is, do you feel like you're in control of your life? Are you in control of your situation? Are you in control of your destiny? Okay. If you are in control of these things, then you tend to do okay. If you're not in control of these things, you tend to be distressed. The one thing to know is this. Sometimes people have more control over situations than they realize. I'll say that again. People have more control over situations than they realize. And I have seen that before. I honestly have. Um, but some people don't realize that. You know, you get into a bad job and someone says, I don't know what I'm going to do about this job. And I say, well, if you can't make the, uh, the employer, you know, any less distressful towards you, then you can always quit. No, I can't do that. Or they get into a bad relationship. Okay. Um, well, you know, if you're not married to the person, you, there's no children between you and this individual, you know, you might say we need to go our separate ways. Oh, I can't do that. You know, sometimes we have more control and we don't always realize it. Okay. But if you realize you have control over many situations and you do, you tend to be less distressed. So those are two examples of how to deal with uh, uh, distress and hopefully make it into something that is you stressing. Many successful people, men and women, are real good at this. They prepare, they plan, and they are in control. Now the last ter term I want to talk about here is called burnout. And in doing these uh, uh, lectures and seminars and presentations, I've had people turn around and tell me, oh, I know about burnout. Well, burnout simply put, is chronic stress. And when you turn around and talk to people, sometimes, sometimes they say, oh, I'm burned out. I know I'm burned out. They're almost proud of it. They're almost proud of it. You give them a, a stress survey and they're almost proud of their score. I have a real high stress score. Ladies and gentlemen, don't be proud of your stress, okay? You would, you, you know, you shouldn't be proud of that. You would never be proud of the fact that you might have cancer. Why should you be proud of the fact that you have stress? Okay. Let me share with you some of the characteristics of burnout. And if you find that you have these, please don't be proud. I've gone through this before in a classroom or in a presentation, and I go through the characteristics of, of burnout, and I can see people light up in class. Yep, I got that first one. Yep, I got that second one. Why would you do that? Don't be proud of your stress. If you see that you have some of these, then work to change them. So what are we talking about? One major characteristic of burnout, clinical burnout, you can be clinically diagnosed with this, is what is called emotional exhaustion. Emotional exhaustion is also known as psychological fatigue. And people who suffer from emotional exhaustion a lot of times are constantly tired. They are constantly stressed and they are constantly tired. All right. Um, they, they, you know, 
can wake up tired, be tired through the day, they can feel exhausted, and yet sometimes they don't sleep well at night. All right? Um, you can't focus. And a lot of times uh, that lack of focus can lead to what we call apathy. You just don't care. And that's not normal for, for that type of individual, you know, that things are going on and they just don't care. Okay? These are elements of emotional exhaustion. There's also what is called depersonalization. To depersonalize simply means that you don't want to be around other people. Okay? And that's not normal for you or normal for the individual. They don't, they don't want to be around other people. They, they, they go to their job, they go to work, and they may go sit in their office or in their cubicle. They, they don't want to be around other people. They may even come home from work and they find that spot where they want to be alone. They don't want to be around other people. The problem with this is that if you spend all your time by yourself and that's not normal for you, you know something is wrong. But if you turn around and you get up and you hear everyone around the, the water cooler or in the break room, and you go join them, or maybe you're at home and you hear your kids laughing and your spouse is playing with them and you go join them, that stresses you out too. That's the problem with depersonalization. You're darned if you do and you're darned if you don't. If you go be by yourself, you know something's not right and that's distressing. But if you go be around them with all the intensity and the noise and stuff like that, that's distressing too. So you have two choices. And neither of them is a good one. That's a pretty bad situation to be in. The last element I'm going to mention here is called reduced personal accomplishment. And with reduced personal accomplishment, what we're talking about is an inability to get things done as you once did. Okay? You might need more time to get done the same task because you can't concentrate. You can't focus. You can't keep to task as you once did. All right. We actually see people who suffer in the world of business from uh, uh, they become workaholics. And if uh, a workaholic is someone that works an awful lot. And if you're a business owner or a business manager and you have a workaholic on your team, you might go, yay, I've got a workaholic. They work and work and work. And I only have to pay them for you know 40 hours a week, but they work 50 hours a week. Well, before you turn around and jump up and down and think about all the extra work you're getting done, you got to ask yourself. Are they working extra hours to get extra work done? Or are they working extra hours to get the same amount of work done? What they used to be able to get done in a 40-hour week now takes them a 50-hour week. Reduced personal accomplishment. A lot of these people start to work longer and longer hours just to get the same amount of work done. And sometimes these workaholics end up quitting which just shocks a business owner. I thought you, you know, were working all these extra hours to get extra work done. No, I was working extra hours just to get the same amount of work done. That's what we're talking about. If you have these characteristics, you need to take note. They are not good and they are not healthy. All right? That's enough for now. Do take care.